Hey guys, welcome back. So on today's episode, we have this lovely cat uh, quick coupler here. This goes on a 349 excavator. It's a pretty big machine. So the um, the pin boss on the, the end of the stick got all wore out, which which sits here and the bushing came apart and there was probably like an inch of play and it was all bouncing around and it got all messed up that'll be for another video however this video we're gonna show line boring these bores getting them back true welding this face up facing this and then you can see like on this one there's like that bevel right there. That's where a grease O-ring sits. And not as much here. And then it's pretty much gone on this one. So we're probably gonna have to weld about three eighths or so of an inch out here. Then we'll face that, put a new bevel on it. And the pin was, I believe the pin got stuck in there. I believe it was like slightly crowned like that and i want you to go take it take this off take it apart so assess the, the situation and my hammer wasn't big enough to move this pin so it didn't appear to be seized because it's not like it's wet with grease but it's not like rusty like it would be if it was seized and i wasn't really sure why it wasn't moving i figured pieces of bearing got in there and got all messed up so what i ended up doing was air arcing around all this all the way through and I feel like it did a pretty good job as far as not hitting the bore I hit it like right there but that's all gonna get cut out anyway so you can kind of see the rolled edge that's probably what was like keeping it stuck in there was that it probably had a, a groove on the pin and it just just wouldn't let it come out. So we're gonna get all this trued back up. And this one is not nearly as bad, but we, we're gonna have to at least do this side, this face. This one we'll probably leave alone. I'll have to get measurements to confirm that. And uh, this bore actually looks pretty good, but we'll, it's probably loose. So we'll just, we're just gonna line bore it. And then we'll deal with a little bit of the wear right here, build that up, sand it down, basically get this thing back to OEM spec. And yeah, we got the parts outside and then we'll get set up on this. All right, we got our nice brand new pins here. I was gonna try to fit them in there and show you how loose it was it is but i don't want to risk uh, messing those up because they're really heavy and i know this has some sharp edges so i'm going to go through the kind of my pre pre line boring process what i do so you can see see that um, line right there that's that's the seam where they weld this on to this thicker ear and this side will have one, should have one too. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there. So that poses a slight issue as far as when you go to weld it, you know, the grease has been getting freaking hammered and hammered and hammered inside that crack. So this, you know, there's probably grease all, all behind this. So when you go to weld it, what does grease do? gets super liquidy and just starts dripping and coming out of all the cracks and all that stuff. So you're gonna get porosity right there. There's not really a way around it unless you heat this whole thing up and you like, you know, spray it out and just take a lot of time. I am gonna take some time and try to clean this, all the grease out of here as best I can. And we're gonna be uh, doing a clean cut on it, but there's still gonna be grease in there, which is probably gonna put porosity in my weld.
if there's a little bit of porosity right in there, I don't see it being a, a big issue. If the entire thing across the entire face is all porosity, then yeah, it's gonna gonna wear out faster, but you can definitely see that, that line right there. So, I think this is interesting to me. You've got three like passes, but then you have like this giant pass right here. I'm assuming this is all welded with the robot. I'm curious if anybody knows the exact story to that. Do they weld it like with three passes and then like a robot floats over it with a TIG, like a TIG torch or, or what, what's going on there? Okay, so I'm gonna take starting fluid because that breaks down grease and oil-based um, materials extremely well, way better than brake clean. Spray starting fluid in there, take the wire brush, rub it all around, use a shop rag, follow it up with uh, this, these badass Milwaukee grinders with a two inch uh, flap wheel deal on it. So that's what I'm doing and I'll set the camera up and stand. Now the, an important thing you wanna look for in this situation is uh, broken pieces of bearing material that have been embedded into here because the, um, the pin boss on the end of the stick has hardened bushings and those have been destroyed and you know they work their way out of there in little tiny pieces. So odds are, all these little tiny nicks in here are all from um, those pieces of bushing. So when we go to weld this, if there's any of that bushing material in there and that go, the weld goes over that and it melts all that together, that's gonna create an extremely hard um, section in your weld and it will most likely uh, break your carbide inserts. So, basically just cut this out until you know it's nice and smooth and you should be able to see a piece of that stuck in there when you're cutting it should come out or there'd be a different color and material or whatever um when you're cutting out it's definitely possible that your insert will hit that and it will break but that's just part of the job it's a lot easier to cut to get it out that way versus having a hardened weld in there which I have made that mistake before welding on some cast and other stuff. And it's like machining glass. Basically you ruin the part. So, um, there you go. We now, I believe we are uh, ready to get our bar in there and get our centering cones on and get the bearings tacked on and then center the bar.
And I went, when I'm doing my centering cones, I just look to see that, you know, they're all touching on a bore that's um, pretty straight already like this. It's, it's pretty much a good circle. It's just a little bit messed up. You can see those are all touching. Now, these, this is not an exact center it. This gets it very close. And then, you know, you do your final adjustment after you get your, your bearings stacked on. Although, this is probably, if you were just to put your bearings on there, take these off and not do any more centering, it's probably close enough. And nobody would probably ever know the difference. But there's a little you know, piece of you that likes to make it perfect. And that's just the way that I am. So get the bearings on there now. Now I did use dual shield to weld to weld these on. It's what was already in the machine, so I'm not really concerned. It doesn't matter. You use dual shield, you could use hard wire, you could stick weld it. Really doesn't matter. So now we just go through and snug all of these all the way up, tighten them all the way up. And that should be pretty close. Wish I had a, a Karen to uh, help me record everything. I think those of you that watch CEE would understand that joke. It's kind of hard to do some of this with one hand and keep the camera steady and all that. Maybe one day, you never know. Okay.
So we got that. Now we can release that one. Can release that one. And if we did this right, let's see, is it slidey? Not too bad. It's a little a little bit tight, but just give him a tap of the hammer and it'll straighten those out. I can't do it with one hand. Have to put the camera back down. We've got our dial indicator. You can see that it doesn't touch right on the top where it's wore out. It starts to move right as we get. Now it's kind of hard to get a you know a good reading where the needle is not going to move on something like that. But right on the very top, it's just you know, it's a little bit oval shaped right there on the top, where right where it doesn't touch. Which is exactly where I would expect it to be. And it's the same on this side. So we're gonna call that good. <clears throat> uh, double double check that these are all tight. And then now we'll get our drive unit on here. Now we're going to select what uh, tool we want to use. See which one. So we to work best. Probably this one. Give us plenty of pre cut. Uh, you know what? Screw it. Let's try the button answer. Why not? So we'll go ahead and run that one again. See how it does on that. Uh, I guess the nice thing about the button insert would be it wouldn't matter um, you know which way you're you're gonna feed it because it's not like a left hand or a right hand it's
Okay, I switched it over to uh, another style. Um, I was getting a lot of chatter. Might be, it's probably because I have my bearings so far apart. <clears throat> um, I might add one, one or two in here. Because I'm do. i going to have to face this. And this bar is definitely, shouldn't have any deflection when that's happening. So, um, we're going to, we're going to continue cutting with, uh, yeah. Okay, well that's pass number two all the way through. And we still got a little bit of stuff there. So we'll, we'll extend that tool out a little bit more and make, just make sure we get all of that. Make sure we don't see any bearing material in there. All right, we got this side cut out, ready for welding. There was a little spot right here on the edge, so I, I cut just that edge a little bit deeper just to make sure there wasn't any bearing material right there. Yeah, almost got a rainbow going on there. That's pretty good. So as I, I was pointing um, while the machine was running, I can't talk because you won't hear me. I was kind of going like this on my finger. If you look, you can see the bar has had deflection, like the bar was moving. So every time that bit moved around, it was kind of moving the bar. So my, my bearings are too far apart, but I am trying to get my clean cut done so that, cause I'm gonna have to weld these faces up by hand. So I'm gonna, you know, be in here with the, with the gun and I, I don't want to put a bearing in here until after I weld those up. That will give me more room and I'll be more comfortable in here. And honestly, for a clean cut for a weld, it, it doesn't matter. It could look incredibly ugly and have chatter everywhere. I mean, you're going to weld over it anyways, right? Anyways, we are going to cut this side now. I got the tool kind of set. Now, when I do my clean cuts, I just eyeball it. I don't measure unless I'm trying to do something specific. You know, that's about uh, 60 thousandths or something it's gonna cut. And, you know, we'll start there and we'll have to work our way out as we need it.
All right, we got her all cut, clean cut. This side, I only did that one pass and it got all the marks out except for, except for right there. And that's not gonna be an issue. So that'll work for clean cut. Now you on here, you can see the, see those lines, those black lines, that's the grease already working its way out of there. So what I think I'm gonna do tomorrow, right before I weld this, I'm gonna heat these up and see if I can get that grease to come out as much as possible anyway, and, and hopes that when I weld it, it won't affect me too much. So we'll give that a, give that a try. And also preheating these will definitely help um, the weld fuse better and bond better in there. All right, so the next day we're gonna um, heat these up, try to get the grease to bleed out of here. You could even see just overnight how much grease came out of that. That's all that wet stuff is all grease. So we're gonna heat it up with the rosebud let them sit for a little while and hopefully all that grease will just kind of seep out of those cracks. And that actually worked pretty, pretty well. You can see it's coming out there and we had a, a whole lot come out that side. If, if I was welding that and that all squirted out of that crack, there'd, there'd be no way to avoid porosity. It'd be pretty, I mean, unless you were stick welding it, I guess, but I've never seen a, a bore welder that takes stick rods. Maybe, maybe someone will invent that one day. Never know. So we'll get the, we'll let this seep out of there for a while and I'll use a rag and, and wipe it out and we might torch it one more time. Okay, I heated it up one more time. We got just a little bit more out of there. We got nothing that came out of this side, so I think we're gonna be good. We'll wipe it out and I'll run the uh, die grinder with the flapper wheel through there. And then we'll set the bore welder up, get her going.
All right, we got everything set up. Um, before I, I guess you could say, give this thing power, we're gonna get the bore welder centered in the bore. The very first thing I like to do is extend it all the way. So now we know we're not gonna run out of travel because we have all this travel to weld in a bore. And that's more than enough to weld that bore. So we're going to, because this is still, still loose, we're gonna slide this in here. where um, the gun is definitely past it, but we're, we, st we will still have enough travel. So we're gonna just kind of snug that a little bit and then we're gonna retract it. I like to put it to where the nozzle is about right there. It's real easy to see it when you're pushing the button and to watch it rotate. So now we're gonna push rotate jog and see how far out we are. For this purpose, I'm going to um, turn the rotation speed all the way up. So we're really close, but we need to move it this way just a little bit. We're going to hit rotate again. Okay, I'm going to call that as being centered. One thing you want to pay attention to is um, this moves moves the uh, the gun in and out. So this could uh, increase or decrease your radius that's rotating. You want this angle that's on the gun right here. You want that and this, how it moves in and out. You want that on the same plane or as close as possible. Because if this is facing up here and this is coming this way, you're not really adjusting it the correct way. And it'll be kind of difficult to get it dialed in. So, keep those two on the same plane and make sure that um, these screws are tight. Otherwise there'll be a lot of slop in here. And with that much sticking out, it'll be all floppy on that end. Anyways, now we're gonna jog the wire. Actually, we're gonna retract it. So the wire doesn't run into the bore. Okay, now we're going to hit wire jog and we're going to see if the wire is going to make it all the way through. Mm, I don't think so. Okay, so we're going to make sure that this is tight right here so that this can't rotate on us. hard to do with one hand. Um, okay, we're gonna extend it all the way then. See the wire in the liner. Let's 
just hit it one more time. See if we can. Okay, so we're gonna have to unscrew it right here. It's just barely getting stuck on there. Apparently it's getting stuck somewhere else. Cause it's not even in there yet. Huh? There it is. It's weird. All right, we got that. Wire jog. Okay, our wire's sticking out there. Trim it back just a little bit. Get our tip on there. Now's a good time to make sure your nozzle's clean. Should probably clean mine a little bit. Kind of an awkward spot. Man. All right, I'm gonna get that tight and then we're gonna weld it. Okay, we've got that all straightened out. Now we're gonna jog out a little bit of wire just in case it got a little curly, curly loop in it. that piece doesn't look too bad so that that'll be okay I'm back it up a little see see that's gonna that's gonna start right on the very edge of that and then it'll start right there and work its way over. So hopefully I got these uh, settings pretty close. They give you a, uh, a formula and a quick reference here for the size of bore and the rotation, how many volts you have it set on and all that. Usually I will start the arc and then I'll have my welding helmet on and everything and then I will um, fine tune these, you know, by sound or by by the way the weld is laying in there, depending on what what I'm trying to accomplish. So I'm gonna put you guys in the stand and then we're gonna get welding. All right, so I was messing with it, and it got uh, it got caught a little bit. It was bouncing around, and it kind of laid a 
laid a shitty spot right there, but it's got gotten pretty cleaned up right now. Seems like it's welding, welding pretty good. Now we just wait. Probably gonna take uh, about 30 minutes or so to weld that out with one pass. Okay, it's the next day. Um, yesterday I was having some issues with wire flip. So, kind of what it is, is it'll be making a perfect circle and it will just kind of do a stupid little zigzag thing. And I've been on the phone with tech support, Climax, and, uh, you know, they had me check a bunch of stuff. And I'm kind of leaning towards maybe because the spool of wire is getting getting low. It's got some extra twists in there. I don't know. So we're going to put a new spool of wire in here. See if we can get rid of that wire twist. Because you can see it. You know, it's like very inconsistent. And it really messes up the the niceness of the, of the bore there. It's all going to get machined out. So it really doesn't matter. But... I don't, I don't like it, so we're gonna try to fix it. So I changed the spool of wire and I turned the amps up a little bit and it seems to Seems to be working a little bit better. I don't feel like it's 100%, but it'll be, be good enough for this. looking way better I will have to say Climax has very good customer service and they will get um, someone who is incredibly knowledgeable on the phone with you in a very short period of time if you're having an issue so just wanted to give them a shout out for their fantastic customer service Weld looks good. We'll let that continue out and then we'll measure it and make sure we don't need to put one more pass. I believe uh, two passes on this side should be good. Don't you just hate when that happens? Those of you uh, big monkeys will understand that. Freaking cone, splatter cone falling off in there. Okay, got our second pass. There's a couple spots in there that are that are a little bit low. So I'm gonna put one more pass in there just just to make sure that it's um, we're not gonna have any low spots when we cut it out. Kind of see right there. So we're gonna we're wire wheel it. Get all the silicone and everything off there. And then we'll weld it out one more pass and then we'll move on to this side. Looking good. Got our uh, lazy shop dogs here. We'll just sit in our chair and watch this puppy work.
All right, I got our first pass in there. And you can see that is way better. And then you can see right on cue, we've got our one bead of porosity right where the grease came out. Kind of the same thing there. So I'm gonna do one more, one more pass just to be safe on this side, and then we'll be we'll be good. And then we'll uh, probably weld the faces up tomorrow. All right, got her welded up. Two passes on this side, and you can see that stubborn old grease worked its way out of there. All right. So it's been a couple days. We've been chasing the, the OEM spec for the inside here. Um, but we was able to come up with the OEM stick um, OD dimension of that pin boss on the end of the stick. You know, of course, they don't, Cat doesn't advertise that. So you have to know somebody to ask. And the customer was dealing with all that. And it's, probably been about a week yeah, that it took to, to get that the correct measurement and they might can they might swap this out take the quick coupler off and they might put a bucket on there otherwise you know I could just easily machine the stick to fit inside here and you're good to go but just in case they take this off we wanted to make sure it was 100% back to OEM spec so now that I have that measurement we need to add about an eighth of an inch here and three eighths of an inch here. And then the stick isn't really too bad, but that's for another video. So now I'm gonna, we're just gonna start building these faces up. And then we took this cover off and noticed this is not supposed to be broken. So that now is also on the list of things to get done. So we're just gonna we're gonna build these faces up. We'll go from there. So that's the basic idea. I'm not gonna record the whole thing because this can take me quite a while. So we're just weld over weld over weld all the way up, clean it off, repeat the process. I'm probably gonna have to do this uh, four times. So four layers of that on this side and probably just if I slowed it down a little bit on this side, I could do get away with doing one, one weld pass. So I'll bring you back um, some point in the middle of that, but I'm not gonna sit here and record all that because it's just the same boring thing over and over and over again. All right, got our first pass done. It's kind of cool looking like having all the welds inside and outside. So I'm sure one of you is gonna comment or suggest it. Yes, I could take this and turn it 90 degrees and then this would be flat you, know, you could weld all that out and then turn it 180 and then this would be flat and weld all of it out um you could do it it's it's really not difficult to weld it like this and this thing weighs like 2300 pounds so i don't just don't feel like messing with it moving it around all right on to the second pass All right. All right, we got half of pass number two. Keep 
keep on chugging. All right, that's three, three layers of weld. And I believe, believe we've got it. There, there might be a little spot right here when I cut it down. It might be a little low, so, and then we'll we'll weld that up and cut it back off. But um, I believe we're pretty close in that. So now we'll probably let that cool off a little bit, and then we'll weld the side up. All right. I ended up adding a little bit of weld right here. Just get it out of the way now because I've been putting my straight edge on here. I just want to try to get as close as possible. And I took the grinder and kind of hit some of the high spots. That'll save a little bit of time as far as having to, you know, do a couple passes with the facing tool to, to get those down. So just hit it with the grinder. Then we could get started right away with a with a cut on there. So I feel like that side's good to go for facing. And we're gonna do this side. We're gonna try to slow it down a little bit and get a little bit um, heavier of a weld, a bulky weld on there. So hopefully I only have to do one one layer of weld on this side because this only needs about an eighth of an inch on this side. Got about half of this side welded up. Not quite sure if one one pass is going to make it. We're I did a quick measurement and we're, we're pretty borderline, so might throw another pass on there just to cover all the low spots. So when I cut it, you know, hopefully it will leave a nice, perfect finish with no in inclusions in it. Well, keep on chugging away here. All right, <clears throat> got our first layer of weld on there. A little bit sloppy right there, but. Just gonna need one more. So we'll uh, get, get the second one on there. All right. So we've got our center bearing mounted it's a little, for a little extra support. We've got our facer set up and we're doing some rough cutting here, kind of a heavy feed rate and everything. Got a little bit of chatter. I'll show more on exactly how this works later. I'm just going to try to face this down until it's nice and smooth and and we'll see our measurement, see how close we are. All right, guys, I made a mistake. I'm only human. So basically, I was off on one of my measurements somewhere. And this is about five thousandths away from where we want to finish. And we still have quite a bit of cleanup to do. So I obviously removed the, the facer and the bar. I'm going to have to go through and weld all of these low spots. I, I might just weld the entire thing up. I'm not sure yet. And that also means that I'm going to have to do uh, one more layer on this side. Because if I was off on this side, then I'll be off on this side. So I made a mistake. It's not that big of a deal. Just more time having to take this off and then put it back on. So luckily it wasn't a mistake like cutting the inside of the bore too small or sorry too big I've done that and basically got to start all over so 
Um, yeah, so now I'm weld this up and then we'll reassemble the facer. All right, so we've got another layer on here. We've got another, another layer on here. I just decided to do the whole thing. Hopefully it'll be less interrupted cuts. Might be a little easier on the bit. I got everything all situated. This is the first time that I've used the Climax facing tool. Um, so I'm still learning a few things here and there, but I already do like it a lot better than the previous facing tool that I had. I will say this one is much um, safer to use than that one. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep cutting away until we get this thing. All right, we have faced this side and it's kind of cool. You can see right here, you can see all the, like the layers of weld, like back and forth. It's not as, as smooth as I would have liked it, but I'll hit that with a, uh, like a scotch bright pad on a grinder and it will just, it'll polish that all up nice. We have a little bit of porosity right there. And a little bit on the back side right here. Not sure why there's prosody there, but I know that's from grease back there. And I'm not gonna mess with those couple little holes there. I don't feel like it's gonna make much of a difference. They're just gonna destroy this thing. So now we're going to work on cutting this um, O-ring bevel in here because that this big o-ring that sits right on this lip kind of like those like that bevel on that one you got that bevel there and that big it's probably like a, i don't know 5 16 o-ring sits on there and that that's supposed to be the grease seal so the grease gets pumped in to the stick comes out it's supposed to hit this this is supposed to be tight and, and then it's supposed to come up and there's supposed to be grease in, in between these faces. That's how it's supposedly how it works. But those O-rings, you know, they, they get uh, tore off pretty quick. So let's uh, get our tool set up to cut that. There we go. So basically this is just a tool bit extender and I have a half inch uh, tool holder in there that I just bent over to match the angle. It gets a little bit of chatter, but it's kind of hard. You have that much sticking out and that far away from the bar and everything but it, it works good you could easily smooth that out with a, a scotch bright pad or you could just leave it it's not really that big of a deal Alright, so I got this side 
cut to the right size. Got a little bit of chatter right there, which I'm not too worried about. We'll buff that out with the Scotch Brite pad. And you got a little hole, a little bit of porosity right there. I'm not worried about it. So now we're going to do our uh, O-ring bevel, and then we'll cut the insides. All right, we have finished our O-ring groove here and we're set up for cutting. So we're gonna hopefully get this side in one or two passes. Let's see, yeah. This side, will, hopefully we can get in two passes and this side might be, yeah, two or three. We'll see, see what it looks like. So we're gonna get these cut to size, confirm that measurement, and then we'll uh, call it a day. All right, well, I uh, finished this side and I needed, I still need to make my, um, my last and final finish pass on the inside. And when I was doing that, my uh, fatherly duties were called upon me. So I was unable to finish that last cut, but now we're going to finish that last cut. Then we'll get this cleaned up 
chamfer the edges and then uh, these these set of holes will be done edges chamfered cleaned up now let's strip the whole thing down and we'll get all of our blocks off here clean it all up I'm not gonna paint it right now because still I gotta do the other side and got some other uh, welding and grinding to do paint it and we're all done so yeah, let's get it stripped down. I got it all cleaned off. Now you can see there's our grease line. Our lovely, lovely grease line. Somehow grease has found its way through the, the porosity and there it is. Um, okay, I'm going to uh, buff these surfaces, uh, hit the inside real quick, and then we should have a finished product. All right. Looks worse on camera. That's actually, that's actually pretty smooth. Got a little porosity. Got some porosity right on that grease seam. Same thing here, nice and smooth. Bores, bores look pretty good. I guess the big question is, does the pin fit? Well, let's find out. And yes, this pin is very heavy. So I'm gonna put you up in the stand and see if I can get it in there. Perfect. Well, that looks like it fit pretty good. Well, I'm gonna end the video here. Those bores, basically gonna be the same process as exactly what we did here. And there's a couple other things that need to get done to it, but I'll probably have Ben do that, so I won't get any footage of it. So, thank you for watching, 
Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one.